Hi. Uh, so I'm Yuan Weiss. I work at Akamai on our web performance products. I also work on browsers, uh, so adding performance-related features to Chromium and WebKit and working on various web standards. Um, but I didn't always work on browsers. Um, for many years, I was working on a mobile-focused uh, web performance optimization proxies, uh, looking at browsers from the outside as black boxes. And we had a bunch of tricks up our sleeve back in the day in order to convince these black boxes to make things faster, but it wasn't easy. And for many years, the browser market share basically looked like this. Uh, IE was the dominant browsers for many years up until, let's say, 2005. Um, but from that point on, uh, we started to see more and more open source browsers in the market up until today where non-open source browsers are an extreme minority. Um, which meant that at some point, it suddenly became possible to tinker with, produ uh, with production browsers, understand exactly how they operate and why, and then use that in order to make them faster, make your website faster, which was awesome. And I was fortunate uh, back in 2008 to get a project to tinker on one of these browsers as part of my day job, adding some like prototype for a new file format um, and added it to Android's browser. And we, I added that prototype, ran a bunch of experiments on that. Uh, they were mildly successful, but then the patch didn't really go anywhere. At the same time, um, it got me hooked. The very idea of working on the different browser code bases and adding performance improvements to them didn't really let me go. And then a few years later, uh, responsive design became a thing. And shortly after that, people started talking about the problem with responsive images and how do we solve them. And as someone who's watching mobile traffic uh, logs um, and seeing those oversized images being downloaded by mobile users, I felt like I have to do something. So I joined the debate, wrote a few blog posts, and generally tried to help out and explain the browser's point of view to image loading. And then the responsive images community group was formed. Uh, the use case was recognized as important. There is a standard group tackling it. And the debate there mostly revolved around the syntax of the, of the different features uh, of the responsive images solution. Uh, and since I didn't really have strong opinions regarding the syntax, as I wasn't really a web developer, I kind of let the, the group do its thing. But six months later, and responsive images were getting very little traction with the browser vendors. Um, because initially, the RICG folks uh, were pushing for a picture element, uh, which was a new multi-element solution that kind of looked like video and enabled developers to, to define explicit breakpoints uh, where the different images took effect. At the same time, browser vendors just heard the word video and freaked out. Uh, they were favorable of a source set solution, which was a new attribute that mimicked CSS's image set, where the developer defined a bunch of images and descriptors for them, and the browser would pick the most appropriate one. Um, there were a lot of heated debates on the subject on the mailing list for a long while, up until the point where browser folks just disengaged completely because it was too much drama and all of them had other problems to work on. Uh, so now we're back in September 2012 and the discussion between the RCG and the browser folks reached a dead end. At that point, Matt Marquis, uh, some of you may know him as Wilto from the internet, uh, he sent out this tweet. Uh, he was the RCG chair and started talking about 
uh, financing uh, browser developer to work on that. Uh, to which I overly politely and recklessly responded, yeah, I'll do that, without knowing where that will actually <laughs> take me. Uh, so fast forward 18 months, and implementations didn't really start in browsers by the browser team, so I basically fired my existing clients and dedicated my full um, daytime as well as nighttime into getting this done and shipped. I ran a crowdfunding campaign in order to do that, which included a video, uh, which included this particular image where, uh, which is featuring my silly face as well as a cat. And the campaign was successful. It also resulted in the following myth, uh, which is not 100% true, but not 100% untrue. Uh, so I mentioned SourceSet as the browser vendor proposal uh, in the responsive image debate. That was a point of a lot of contention, which is true. But once we stopped shouting at each other and looked at the actual use cases, we realized there is no contention at all. And both picture and SourceSet are proposals that are complementary to each other and tackle different use cases. Uh, and SourceSet tackles the resolution switching use case, which is basically where we're trying to have a single content image on the page that looks nice, regardless of screen resolutions or image dimensions. And for that purpose, SourceSet has two different markup mechanisms. The first is X descriptors. Um, and the descriptors are describing the image, not the user or the device. What the descriptors are telling the browser is this is an image of 2x density and use that information widely, wisely. And the browser is then free to pick whatever image uh, it chooses in order to satisfy the trade-off between image weight and visible artifacts. The markup, as I'm sure you're familiar with, looks uh, something like this, where you have pairs of URLs and descriptors separated by commas. Uh, and this is what you would use if you have fixed dimension images and just want to account for them being displayed to users on different screens with different screen densities. Then we have W descriptors, which are again describing the image, uh, telling the browser this image has a physical width of this and this pixels. Uh, and the browser, again, is free to pick any of the variants uh, according to you know, weight versus quality trade-offs. Uh, the markup here looks something like this, where, again, similarly, uh, URL and descriptor pairs. Um, there is one problem here, though. At the time that the browser decides which image it needs to download and which resource to pick for it, it doesn't yet know what the image display dimensions would be. Um, that is something that the browser only knows after it performs layout. And after all this blocking CSS and all the blocking JavaScript finished downloading, processing, and being executed. Um, but usually, the browser tries to load images way before that. And how can we do that with that uh, syntax, with that markup? Uh, so we thought about that problem for a while, and the only way that this is possible is by telling the browser ahead of time what the image dimensions would be, or a good enough approximation of that. This is the reason we have the sizes attribute, which enable the browser to know what the image dimensions would be, and then the browser can use that information in order to pick the right image uh, while, again, taking into consideration the weight versus quality, but also taking into consideration both the dimensions and the screen resolution. Um, so the markup for the size of the attribute is slightly more complex, and we have pairs of media conditions and CSS length, uh, where um, the media conditions mirror our responsive breakpoints, and the length mirrors the 
width of the image in that case. And that enables us to tack the, tackle the resolution switching use case, uh, which is basically telling the browser uh, what the image dimensions would be in the different breakpoints. Um, and what do we do if we need different images for different breakpoints? So something like this. Uh, this is where a uh, picture comes into play. And picture enables us to use media queries in order to define the different groups of resources and then tell the browser which group of resource would fit into each breakpoint. And then each one of the groups is a source set that uh, can include multiple resources in the browser which the browser can pick from. Um, so markup uh, looks something like this, where we have a top-level picture element with uh, source children, each one uh, depicting a breakpoint, and the image at the end is the fallback for that list of uh, source children. Each one of them can include a source set, like includes a source set attribute with a potentially a list of resources. Um, so, so far we talked about the markup solutions, but client hints is another way to deliver responsive images today with a content negotiation mechanism, unlike markup. And client hints enable us to tackle some of those same use cases without any markup changes, which can be easier to deploy. And in other cases, it can enable us to tackle them with smaller markup changes. Um, client hints are request headers which send information to the server and enable the server to adapt the content to device characteristics and the user environment. And the different hints that we have at our disposal are DPR, which sends out the screen resolution, the screen density to the server. Um, viewport width, which tells the server what is the viewport that we're using and therefore what's the maximum image dimensions uh, that the user is most probably going to need. And then width uh, gives the server visibility into the actual image dimensions. But as we already said, uh, the browser doesn't know that until it is uh, performing layout, which is after, usually after the request uh, was sent. So the width client hint is something that is all, only attached to the request if a sizes attribute or a width attribute are present in the HTML. So if the browser has that knowledge when it's sending out the request. Uh, and otherwise, that header is not sent out. All these hints require an opt-in in order to be sent out from the browser to the server. Um, the reason for the opt-in is that these are all new uh, HTTP headers, which browsers are not super excited about adding more headers to the request and bloating up the requests. And browsers were generally skeptical of uh, the usage here and therefore didn't want to include the, all of these uh, headers by default. Um, there is also a privacy angle here where these headers enable passive fingerprinting if sent out without, a, without an opt-in, uh, where if an opt-in is required, then it becomes active fingerprinting, which is slightly less uh, problematic. All that means that the browser, like the server has to send an opt-in uh, in the HTML response in order to get those hints in all the following sub-resource requests. Um, finally, uh, another header that's related to client hints is the content DPR response header, which enables the server to tell the browser what is the image's density in order for the browser to correct the image's intrinsic dimensions according to that density. Now, I know what you're thinking. What is intrinsic dimensions? This is not something that we usually deal with as web developers. Um, intrinsic dimensions are essentially um, 
what the image dimensions would be uh, when displayed in the browser if there are no other layout restrictions. Uh, and it is derived from the image's physical dimensions. So the number of pixels, like width and height of pixels. Um, so if we'll take an example of a goat in the snow looking back at better days, probably. Um, we can see uh, that the image is uh, displayed on the screen. It is, however, a 4K pixel wide image constrained by the max width 100% directive. And if we'll take a look at the same image without the max width, max width uh, directive, CSS directive, all we'll see is a blurry upper left corner, which is not great. Um, and when talking about intrinsic dimensions, uh, they have to be density corrected for images. Uh, so an image's density corrected intrinsic width and height are the intrinsic width and height after taking into account the current pixel density, uh, which is to say they're just divided by the pixel density. So if I have a 4,000 pixel wide image, uh, over a 2x uh, density, it looks slightly better, and it, we still see the upper left corner, but we have some more details. It fits better, and because this is a 4K image, at 4x, we can actually see the actual goat and uh, fit all the image on the screen. And this is all done through uh, density corrected intrinsic dimensions, uh, and yeah, they basically divide up the image dimensions. And for source set, that happens automatically because the browser knows which resource it downloaded. So if we have X descriptors, the browser just divides uh, the dimensions by the descriptor. If we have W descriptors and sizes, the browser can still use those values in order to calculate the image density, which is why it's very important to put in the right dimensions in your W descriptors. Otherwise, the density calculations will be off. Uh, contrary to that, uh, with client hands, the server needs to tell the browser explicitly which resource density was picked. So again, this is why we need the content DPR header, which communicates that info to the browser. Okay. Uh, so these are all uh, solutions. Uh, this is all state of the art three or four years ago. In the meantime, cross-browser support has picked up, at least for the markup solutions, and they are now supported in all modern browsers. So using them is a no-brainer. Uh, but since this talk is called response like it's not called responsive images four years ago, uh, what is still missing and what is still being worked on? Uh, so we have a few missing use cases that we deliberately or non-deliberately uh, dropped from the initial set of solutions. Um, we, have, we don't have today client hints on navigation requests. Uh, there are a bunch of client hints headers that we need uh, that weren't added initially and that we've since figured out how to add them. Uh, high descriptors are still missing. Background images don't have a full set of uh, responsive solutions. And responsive image preloading is also uh, something that's being worked on. And finally, lazy loading uh, is a long standing feature request. So client hints on navigation requests. Uh, one of the major use cases people have wanted from client hints uh, is to be able to get those same hints on navigation requests uh, in order to um, content negotiate the HTML and perform various manipulations to the HTML content when serving it to different devices. But because we need an accept CH opt-in, um, that never was possible, like that is not possible on client hints today, uh, which means we cannot adapt HTML. Um, and one of the side effects for that is that servers have no way to conditionally serve 
responsive images markup. And what's the motivation for that? Uh, we're ba basically, uh, that's a typo there. Uh, <laughs> um, basically, um, with client hints, especially when we're using the sizes attribute, we can provide more targeted images um, and therefore better image compression. Instead of having a ready-made list of resources uh, that are serving our entire user range, we can create those resources on the fly or uh, cache more resources on the server side and therefore serve a more tailored image if we have the width client hint and get compression, better compression results. Uh, but up until today, um, if we're doing that, it means that we don't add source set to the page. So all browsers which don't support client hints, which today is all browsers that are not Chrome, which is a lot, um, don't have any responsive images solution. So the trade-off here is pretty harsh, and I believe that it has made client hint adoption uh, less than it should have been. Um, so this could, like, adding uh, client hints on navigation request can potentially improve adoption, uh, can help people out. How can we achieve that? So a very recent uh, proposal um, is accept CH lifetime, uh, very recently shipped, uh, which basically enables us to tell the browser um, on top of the accept CH opt in, you also need to remember that for this number of seconds. And then the browser will follow up with those hints on all requests for that. Uh, time frame, which means that navigation requests will get uh, the hints in the future as well. And that still means that the very first view will not get client hints, uh, which is not ideal. But at the same time, we need to handle the no client hints case anyway for non-supporting browsers, so it's not that painful. Um, another uh, recent development in the client hints field is that uh, client hints to third parties were recently dropped. Uh, the reason for that is privacy reasons. Um, because client hints, even though there was an opt-in from the first party, from the content provider, the opt-in didn't include specific hosts. And that meant that when uh, a publisher was opting in to client hints, they were now transmitting client hints to all uh, their third parties, including ones that only have a tracking pixel and normally wouldn't have access to the client hint information. Um, that came up as, uh, like as part of the privacy review for Accept CH Lifetime, and as a result, uh, support for uh, client hints uh, was removed from third party for the time being. Uh, also support for non, uh, so for non-secure HTTP was also removed as part of the same privacy review. Um, but there are plans to bring back that uh, third party support, to re-enable that third party support through feature policy, which is a new standard that en enables a first party site to indicate what it can and cannot do, and mostly what its third parties can and cannot do. Um, so it falls under that, uh, that we could include client hint delegation to certain third parties and enable to include a list of hosts that are allowed to get uh, client hints. Uh, so the current proposal looks something like this, which is not that pretty. Uh, each one of the different hints will have to include a list of hosts, which is, includes a lot of duplication, uh, and duplication in headers is particularly bad in header values because there is no way to compress that. So HTTP H2 compression doesn't touch those values. So uh, it's not 
uh, pretty to write and it's not pretty on the wire. So we're currently discussing slightly simpler markup proposals such as this one with uh, asterisk or even if we'll go nuts, uh, this one. Uh, but there are various um, trade-offs there between uh, verbosity and having a generic parsing algorithm that also fits into CSP, and this is all ongoing debate at the moment. But the good news is that it is something that is being worked on, and third-party support will be back at some point. Um, now, thinking about the content adaptation space, uh, having uh, the screen resolution and uh, image dimensions is great, but there are many more dimensions to uh, content adaptation, many, many more things where we can adapt the content based on the user's environment, needs, or wishes. Um, this is an article I wrote uh, three years ago. Uh, and little by little, these different hints are being added to the platform. Uh, so basically, we need more client hints. We want to be able to kind of negotiate based on the user preferences, device capabilities, network conditions, battery status, and eventually also monetary cost. Um, so, um, User preferences first. Uh, save data is a client hint which is the, indicates that the user has explicitly requested us to send them less data. Uh, this often happens uh, in Chrome uh, when a user turns on Google's data saving proxy. Uh, I believe it also happens in other browsers with similar solutions. And those data saving proxies only operate on non-secure HTTP sites, which are less and less prevalent. And for everything HTTPS, uh, Chrome doesn't tunnel everything through a single proxy. So this hint enables the origin or uh, its delegated CDN uh, to know that the user is interested in extra compression in order to make things either faster or cheaper. Uh, and then can apply extra compression based on that. Uh, that's also the only hint that doesn't currently require accept CH opt-in, at least as it's implemented in Chrome, because we consider it the user opt-in to be enough. Uh, the next hint uh, recently shipped in uh, Chromium is device memory. Um, it is also mirroring a relatively new device memory API, which in a sense enables us to get a rounded up number indicating if the user has a lot of memory or very little of it. And, and then it enables either client-side code if we're looking at the JavaScript API or server-side if we're talking about the client hint uh, to decide whether it really needs to deliver the resource uh, to the device. Because if we look at 4K full screen images, on some devices, they, are, they just cannot be physically rendered due to their memory constraints. So this client hint enables us to know when not to send them and pick a more appropriate one which will actually be renderable on the device. Uh, one thing about the device memory API uh, is that it enables us to get rid of the cut the mustard method as a proxy for device capabilities. Who here is familiar with the cut the mustard uh, method? Not a whole lot. Uh, so it's a term coined at the BBC a few years back where browsers which didn't support a certain set of APIs, uh, such as query selector all, uh, were considered not cutting the mustard and therefore uh, getting a basic experience with less JavaScript and less fancy images and no videos. And while that still works for really, really old browsers and devices, in today's ecosystem you have many fully capable browsers, uh, so Chrome and other Chromium forks that are installed on mediocre and worse hardware. 
Um, and many of the phones in the emerging markets only have uh, 256 or 512 uh, megs of uh, RAM and awful CPUs to go with it. So as a method, cutting the mustard doesn't really cut the mustard anymore uh, if we're talking about it as a proxy for device capabilities. Um, CPU class is another uh, API as well as a hint that we're considering uh, as part of the web performance working group. Um, but up until now, we haven't figured out a way to expose that that will be actually both actionable and future-proof. Uh, but it's still something that we're thinking about. Uh, next are network conditions. Uh, the blog post that I showed earlier uh, was mostly a rant about why the net info API of the day was not sufficient. Um, but the net network information API has since significantly improved and contains a bunch of useful hints today. Uh, so it provides us hints regarding the network RTT, round trip time, in the short period that preceded uh, the time that re the request went out. Uh, the download, ban ba download bandwidth measured in that period, as well as the effective connection type, which is somewhat of a weighted score between these two, uh, these two values uh, that we added in order to reduce the variance here and to be able to use a single value rather than vary the responses on two different values. Um, that gives us the ability to say things like, let's not bother those 2G or 3G-like uh, users with videos. These values are not always 100% accurate, but they're still way better than uh, the status quo. And these hints are currently implemented in Chromium behind a flag, but not yet shipped by default. Uh, one more hint missing uh, is battery status, uh, which can help us uh, make decisions on the server and avoid uh, CPU and network hogging content when we're sending it down to users that are in dire battery need. Uh, and an equivalent API is also exposed in JavaScript, um, but privacy, again, is why we can't have nice things. And um, there was a recent uh, theoretical breach that was brought up by Uber uh, while they were swearing that they don't actually do that, uh, where they pointed out that they could theoretically, for example, surge price 4x users who have less than 5% battery because they know they will pay anything in order to get on that car before their phone dies. Uh, so, as a result, uh, Firefox has removed support for the battery status API, and generally, people in the standard community are not excited about extending that capability, so we're not really bringing up a client hint for that at the present moment. And the other, uh, like the fifth uh, missing hint is monetary costs. And this is something that we never figured out where to get the information from. Uh, all discussions that I'm aware of with mobile operators did not go anywhere uh, because they don't necessarily want to expose that data to other parties. Um, and that basically means that there is no easy way for the browser to get that information regarding actual cost. Uh, there were different proposals about asking the user and like UI-based proposals where the user will indicate a certain network as expensive or not, but this is not yet, like none of those proposals took off uh, because UI is tricky and expensive. Um, one more subject that we put aside when working on the initial proposals uh, is height descriptors. Uh, we have width descriptors as part of source set because most of our layouts are width constrained, but at least at the moment, there is no equivalent height descriptors. And there are use cases for that uh, where 
uh, for example, in this website, that the images are height constrained. They're supposed to take the entire height of the screen rather than its width. Uh, and that's a legitimate use. Um, but um, we never got around, like uh, no one at the RICG never got around to actually get that use case to the top of their uh, to-do list and actually work on that. Uh, there are also some tricky aspects uh, related to aspect ratio uh, with uh, H descriptors, because if we're mixing both H and W descriptors, uh, the aspect ratio of all the images need to be the same. And what do we do? Like, what does the browser do when that's not the case? Um, there is also a missing uh, use case for first class aspect ratio definition in CSS. Uh, there are different ways to define aspect ratio in CSS. None of them is good. Uh, they're all off awfully hacky. Anyone here ever define an extra div with a petting top, petting bottom thing? Okay. Uh, do you know what that actually does? Like, anyone knows what that does? I, I did that. I don't know what it's actually, why does that particular incantation actually work? I never dug into that. But it's something that uh, people pass on from blog post to blog post about, like, this is the way to get aspect ratio on the web. And it's not great. Uh, so we started talking about aspect ratio as a first-class CSS property that will do the same without requiring an extra div and without uh, using seemingly unrelated properties. Um, and at the same time, we had requests for an equivalent HTML attribute uh, for CMS users who cannot have this uh, CSS control but still want to be able to control the aspect ratio when uploading an image. Um, so um, they're also, like, aspect ratio are also particularly important when loading the page to avoid it jumping, the layout jumping from underneath the user when the images come in. Uh, because the image dimensions only come in where, with the first few bytes of the image, so, and up until then, the layout is undetermined and then relayouts when the, once the image has come in. And having a fixed aspect ratio ahead of time can help us to prevent this UX problem. Um, but again, this is uh, not something that, it's, that is on top of anyone's to-do list at the moment. Um, as we don't hear a lot of demand for either a height descriptor or aspect ratios, it's still in the back burner and there are still proposals that will someday may make it. Uh, next up, we have background images uh, where we had a proprietary way to tackle uh, DPI-based resolution switching in background images. Uh, it's been available ever since the original source of proposal in 2012 or a bit before that. It looks something like this and very much like uh, the source set syntax, uh, we have the same for uh, image set. And there's a standard equivalent, um, but it never got implemented anywhere. But uh, the good news is that nowadays work is starting in Chromium uh, to unprefix that vendor prefix API and implement the standard version for that. It's being done by an external contributor, which is awesome. Uh, and hopefully we'll see more on that soon. Um, background images are also still missing with descriptors uh, because there is no way to define the equivalent of with descriptors and background images today. We have either DPR or full-fledged art direction uh, with, uh, with media queries. Um, but again, it's not something that's on the top of anyone's uh, list of things to do. It's, uh, so it's not, hasn't gotten a lot of love recently. Um, one more subject that is related to images 
uh, is responsive images preloading. Uh, and uh, Kit talked earlier about preload. And so it's a relatively new standard that decouples the resource download from its execution, enables us to download an image ahead of time. And for images, it means that they can be downloaded earlier, even if the point in which they will be used is not yet defined on the page. Um, but link elements do not have source set defined or didn't have source set defined. Uh, and so there's no way to define multiple resources and no way to have a sizes like equivalent. Uh, so very recently, uh, there is a new proposal to add just that. So add source set to link that is only valid for uh, rel preload and add a sizes attribute or an image sizes attribute to link. Uh, and the reason we cannot add a sizes attribute is that um, the sizes attribute name is already taken by link rel icon, uh, which is uh, something we failed to anticipate when uh, picking up the sizes name, and now developers everywhere will pay the price by adding three more letters whenever preloading responsive images. So this is still a very early stage proposal, but could potentially uh, change. And I'm out of time. Uh, so we won't talk about lazy loading. Um, so, uh, sorry about that. Basically, lazy loading is awesome. But uh, lazy loading is awesome. Um, um, intersection observer is the way to go there. And we are talking about some native solutions on that front. Uh, but main takeaways is that we made some progress in the last four years, even though it was less than before. Um, client hints lifetime, as well as a set of new hints, is something that is actively being worked on. Uh, background image, uh, what, uh, image set is being worked on. Lazy loading to some extent. Uh, but there are a bunch of issues that need more love, such as high descriptors, aspect ratio, and full source set, so with descriptors and background images. Uh, so use those responsive images solutions. Uh, usage matters a lot in terms of where the browsers focus effort. And if you are able and willing, uh, please feel free to contribute. And if you wonder how, feel, please ping me and I'll be happy to help. Thank you.